Good morning, Periscope. Juliana Page here. How is everybody this morning? Good to see you. Hello, hello. We are on day 26 of our 30 days of giving thanks challenge. And today is a topic that normally you wouldn't think that you would give thanks for, but that is part of the purpose and intention of this whole study in the first place is giving thanks in and through all things. So I have a word for you. And it's for those probably with a heavy heart or those that have been challenged before by this. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Lord. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father God, we pray your peace and your comfort over those that are hurting this morning, Lord. We pray that you draw near to those, God, that have a broken heart. And we pray, God, that this word may be a gift to all those who hear, Lord, that you do something meaningful, that you do something powerful with these words, Lord. So I surrender this time to you, Lord, and we thank you for what you're about to reveal to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, all right. So the word that I have for you all today is called broken things, broken things. So we don't always think of being broken as something to be grateful for or being broken as something that any of us would ever want. But the truth is that God uses broken things. And so I thought that I would open with a word to give you some context as far as how I came to that today and also really build a case for this this morning. So this is coming from a gentleman named Vance Havner, and he has a quote that says this, God uses broken things. It takes broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to give rain, broken grain to give bread, broken bread to give strength. It is the broken alabaster box that gives forth perfume. It is Peter weeping bitterly who returns greater power than ever. So powerful. Main point with this, this quote, this message, this word from Vance Havner is that God uses broken things. And as I was studying, I was studying a lot in Joel this morning, but there is some context that I wanted to develop here because this is something that's often hard to comprehend and something that isn't always what we gracefully walk through. It, it hurts being broken and it hurts finding God in broken things, but that is what our master does. So God doesn't want to see us set up for failure. That, that is the truth. And he wants us to be a people that through our lives, he is able to reveal his glory. He is able to reveal his goodness. He is able to reveal his greatness, his mercy, his power, his wonder, right? His, just his sovereignty through our lives. And oftentimes we need to be broken because broken people are humble people right? And God does not <laughs> give kindly to the proud. So oftentimes it's a humble heart. It's a surrendered heart. It's a submitted heart that God can use and that he can work through. So God honors those who honor him. And it is our call and our responsibility to respond to his word. But we don't always do that. If we're honest, we don't always do that. And if left to our own devices and our own power and our own strength, we would probably tend to operate on our own and figure out things on our own. But God is a God of transformation. He wants transformation and he looks upon the heart. So it actually says, and this is coming from Joel 2.13, and it says this, Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. So God doesn't want your outward appearance. He doesn't care about the things that you give him. He doesn't need that, but he wants your heart. So he wants you to give your heart to him, to come before him with all of your heart. And if we have a lot of things in the way, and if we are selfish and prideful and bitter and resentful and so many other things, God can't work with what we don't give him. That's just the reality. So God is a God of transformation. And the main thing being, even if we are wounded over and over to be broken so that we can be made new, I wanted to give an example of where this is true in life to, to simplify it, so to speak. So think about when you are renovating a home, right? When you are renovating a home, 
what do you have to do? You have to break it entirely. You have to break it apart to build something new. So oftentimes when you think about your heart, God has to break you and wound you several times till you get to the place where he can transform you and make you brand new. Because there's just some things inside of us that God doesn't have for us and that look nothing like him. And so that's really what's happening is he is getting rid of everything that doesn't look like him because he wants to restore you into proper relationship with him. And we just can't do that when we're living as a separate entity, as an island, so to speak. So God may show us the way through brokenness. That That is sometimes a vehicle that God uses. And he there, through that brokenness, is able to restore life and bring you back into that right relationship with him that you didn't even know was possible, quite honestly, because you could start seeing God for all of the wonderful things that he is when you are no longer looking to yourself or looking to others or looking to the world to satisfy you. All right, so let's talk about this. You are made new and restored through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is God's promises, right? The promises that are in the word of God. These are real answers to prayers of faith that you pray. And so when you are broken, it's really, really important that you surround yourself with faith and with promises and really just keep giving your heart afresh to God. Okay, so let's move into now what it is that God is after. Here it is. This is coming from Psalm 51, 6. So why would God allow brokenness? Why would God um, allow these tests and trials? Why would God do that? Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom. So God cares about your inner life. He cares about what's stored in your heart. He cares about what's going on in you right? He, he cares completely about you. God is a God of goodness and mercy <laughs> that is relentless, right? And he will never leave you and never forsake you, but he doesn't want you to be full of and living with things that were never designed for you. And he desires truth in your innermost being. Freedom, right? And he will make you to know wisdom. So even though you might not get what is happening, even though it may may hurt you, right? It may not be comfortable, but God will cause you to know wisdom. And he will reveal things in his time, okay? So quick word today. So we're wrapping it up here. So the main part that God wants to get to is he is a God of restoration. So that is what we have to be thankful for today. This day 26 of our 30 days of thanks challenge is that God is a God of restoration. So yes, God uses broken things, but his main desire for anything to be broken is so that he can restore it and do a new thing. So here it is. This is coming from Joel 2, 25 to 28, and it says this, and I will restore to you, this is one of my favorite verses, and I will restore to you the years the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. How has he dealt with you? Wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Praise God. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So I'm getting here that he never wants his people ashamed. His people will never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions." So God is a God of restoration. He will literally break all of the things up in your life that are not meant to be a part of your life that will cause greater suffering and greater pain so that he can restore you brand new and give you this life that he's designed and planned for you, which is a good plan, a promise to give you a future and a hope, right? And he, he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that you might live in freedom and not under guilt and shame and condemnation and those sins, right, that so easily beset us. So he comes to give you this life, but he can't fully give it to you if you are not broken, if you are not humbled before him, all right? If you are not a vessel that he can use and that he can remake and remold and reform and restore, 
Amen. So God is a God of restoration. Amen. Now, just to wrap this up, this is coming from Romans 10, and it's verse 11. And it says this, No man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trusts in him will ever be put to shame or disappointed. So my encouragement today is for anyone who is in a broken season, so anyone who has a broken heart, anyone who has these broken thoughts that they just seem to not be able to break out of, anybody whose emotions seem broken, they just feel overwhelmed and weary more often than not, or anyone who has lost somebody and is grieving, God uses broken things. God is a God of restoration. So what do you do when you are facing brokenness? Believe in him. <laughs> despite what it looks like, despite what it feels like, believe in him, adhere to him, rely on him, trust in him, and you will never be put to shame or disappointed. Amen. So the word is here. Sometimes a word in season is to prepare you for what you're about to experience, and sometimes a word is to get you through what you are experiencing, and sometimes a word is even an encouragement because you have overcome and got through some things that you never even imagined you would get through. So this word today is an encouragement that God is a God of restoration, that if you believe in him, if you rely on him with your whole heart, if you submit yourself to him, humble yourself before him, right? You will not be put to shame or disappointed. And it says you will not ever be put to shame or disappointed. So I pray that this blessed you. Give thanks even for the broken things today. And may you have a wonderful day. Amen. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.